Burn it. Burn. Burn. <laughs> Full stream slide now. Oh, that's another person confirmed they're gonna watch. I should probably mute my phone because a lot of people are starting to message me. Hey, I'm gonna watch. Hey, I'm gonna watch. No, they ain't. It's they already so far. Oh, it's eight o'clock. You just start the stream. Yeah, stream's up. Oh, stream's up. Oh wow, no, I see my face up there. That's creepy. You have a face. I'm not going to watch both. <laughs> I, I just put it up there so I can see it. I, I really just want the chat from it. Yeah, uh, I'd like to watch the chat. Maybe I'll go... Well, you uh, can pop out just the chat. And it, I'm hoping it doesn't distract me. It doesn't track you? Distract. Oh. It knows where you are. Uh, there's a picture of me up there. It's going to attract me. It's me. I'm sexy. You forgot to do something else? I, I have to remember this is live. People are hearing me talk. Chicken. Nice. Okay, I'm gonna tell people we're live. I got big, uh, big forks, big bites. Alright. Hey, everybody. Hi. Are we on a new day? I got all these players, and I have this whole internet, and now there's a giant diesel engine truck right outside my window. Oh man, you're broadcasting on the after where these. They're cool glasses. This channel is for mature audiences. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh. I'm not saying everybody in the chat. I'm going to refresh it because I think I might have broke it. Mute it. I don't need to hear myself on a delay. We can hear you too. Thank you. You're welcome. That was good. Hold up. Ready? We're still waiting on Ready? Ashley? I'm good. We're good. Oh, we're good. We're starting. <coughs> oh my god, I love this fish. <laughs> it's the best fish. <laughs> okay, so you all got some letters. We all got letters. Okay. Did we all get the same that. letters? This was uh, not really an emergency mission, so everybody got a chance to uh, get some stuff. Okay, so. Um, Venture Captain, Drandall Drangs, Entrance is understated, as always. As he meets with you in the morning, he has a stack of papers. And he's... Who is this venture captain? Drandal Drang. Drandal Drang, okay. He's drooping papers behind him as he comes up and he uh, plops himself onto this big cushion chair and says, oh, good morning. Uh, it's good to see you in the bright, shining morning light. <clears throat> well, welcome, welcome. I'm glad you've made yourselves at home. No point in beating around the bush anymore. I'm sure you're all curious of what's going on. Um, as you may or may not know, the society has been bolstering its influence with the esteemed Black Rose Society, or Black Rose family, for some time now. And we've assisted them in their famous museum with various incidents over the past few years. Um, in the process... We've helped them discover some levels of catacombs in their museum. Just recently, the Black Rose Museum's curator, Nigel Aldane, informed us that he's discovered a mysterious portal within the catacombs and has sought information regarding how to open it. We sent one of our men, an agent by the name of Anumet Acrostera, uh, to help them research the matter further. Part of his research involved delving into their various attics and crawl spaces of the museum, searching for clues that might lead to the whereabouts of this portal's key. Earlier today, Nigel showed up here, claiming that something was wrong with Animet. 
it seems he set off some sort of a curse or a trap while poking around in the attics, and he was acting strangely. Now he can't be found at all. So head to the Black Rose Museum and get to the bottom of this. Find Animet and see what sort of trouble he's gotten himself into. If it's um, irreparable, you'll need to pick up where he left off and figure out where that key is. So you're saying that... Oh, I need to find my note here. You're saying that Nigel has told us that Anumet has told the Pathfinder so that Anumet has undergone a curse or some disaster. From the way he described it, he sounded like he wasn't acting himself. Was was very strange. You, Nigel's gone back to the museum. He's waiting for you to arrive. You could get more details from him. I, I must confess, I had received a note uh, earlier earlier today, and I, I, it was mystery to me why why Alestra Zardian sent me a letter uh, and said something about Animat and this curse, and I hadn't heard this yet, and I wasn't exactly sure what was going on, but I think this is important that, that we investigate this and determine exactly what has occurred. That This can't be good. Uh, right, that's why we're sending you, because you've been successful in the past so far. Well, of course I have. <laughs> and as, as I take a chug of my drink, like, as well, in both now and in game. Animet is a valuable asset to the society, so um, making sure of his um, safe return is of utmost importance. What what can you tell us of Animet? He's an Osirianologist, um, a scholar um, steeped in Osirian lore and knowledge. We don't necessarily know that this portal has any connection to Osirian, but he is his um, ability to uh, traverse the jungles of uh, libraries and crawl spaces and crypts have uh, he seemed right for the job. Blackhurst Museum isn't the most safe place. On a on a bad day. Well, lots of um, lots of dangerous things have worked their way into it and have managed to be stored away without being properly identified or cataloged. Oh my God! My cats are like trying to climb the blinds. <laughs> That's what cats do best. Has like, everyone oh bought everything they wanted to buy? Or do they need to stop on the way out? Um, I, I did some shopping just yesterday, so I think I have everything <coughs> I need. Um, do you have everything you need? Tiger armor, spells, anything? I, I, got, I got a few scrolls, so I think I'm good. I don't even know how much money I have. <laughs> how much money? You're just a hippie check. Money? What's funny? Oh my god, they knocked the screen out of the window. Oh shit. They're not, it's not like they're gonna jump out the window. I know, but still. If they do, they die. They're freaking out. Hey. <laughs> can you not Minor Bob while they deal with the cats? The best thing about <laughs> Please get inside my house. <laughs> That's why I said, why are the cats hanging out of your window earlier when I came in? I just thought you meant because the window was open. Oh. Oh, Is that what y'all want? You want to just be out? Open out the window. Yeah, just see some... Yeah, they don't want you to open doors or windows. They just want to make you think they do. And then they walk away as soon as you open it. Um, if you guys want, you can make a knowledge history or knowledge local check because this place is a pretty sort of pass. I can do that. Uh, that just straight through 20. I know nothing. You guys are chaos. Isn't that one big 20 plus? If you have the skill, if you have the skill trained at all. Hey, 
and talk. Unless it's knowledge, religion, or I can somehow roll profession brewer with it, I got none. <laughs> I've yet to actually use my profession brewer. Monday. That seems like your fault, Perry. Hey, you know what? I was going for role playability. He's putting a salad. Weird cow. <laughs> um. All right. So you guys, is, you. Uh, whoa. So, um, you can You know of the Blackers Museum. Um, it's got a pretty strong reputation. Um, it, supposedly it belonged to this eccentric wizard way, way back when Absalom first started. Um, and it was abandoned for centuries until this family, uh, this wealthy, influential family called the Black Roses, is, is, uh, turned it into a museum because apparently they had a bunch of stuff and money. Um, so a museum, like, like we would think of museum, right? Like gallery exhibits, yeah. spaces, okay. Yeah, like, and you know that their main, like, you, as soon as you walk in the big, the main exhibit hall, they've got, like, a big dinosaur skeleton hanging from the ceiling. And our Pathfinder friend was working on what exactly? Supposedly they found a portal in the basement, and oh, he was cool. trying to figure it out. Let's go jump in it. So, it's a museum with a portal in it. Okay, this sounds fine. <laughs> Let's go. I don't need to buy anything. Do we have a contact there that's waiting for us? Let's go talk to Nigel Aldane who's waiting for you. Yep. Excuse you. What am I drinking on? I got a cup of water. Who are you talking about? Honda Guy 00, or is it Guy? <laughs> and I got Michelob Ultra. Stop. <laughs> You're kind of obsessed with my water. Um... Yeah, you can go check it out. There's another little little tidbit. Um, the reason the the Black Rose got so wealthy is because they like married all their um, particularly legendarily beautiful daughters off to important people all over across the world. All black Rose, like flower, or Black Rose to like the meat. Uh, just S R O S, Black Ross. Black Ross. It's not even C, like B L A K R O S. Okay. Black Ross. Black Cross. Where's my little place to like take notes and do my rules and shit? Excuse oh, you. I don't even have the chat window open on yours. Oh. Ding. Awesome. Fries are done. I see a lot of chat. The main chat looks pretty quiet to me. Um. So let that's go. I, I have no reason to stay around. I've done all my shopping already previously. Happy and shopped out. I mean, I have money. I if somebody needs anything. something, we should buy it. If anybody thinks there's something we need. Do you have plenty of heal potions? Um, I have four scrolls of cure light wound, two scrolls of delay poison, and two cure medium wounds. Ooh, fancy. Yeah, rope, because I feel like rope is something that we need. On a somewhat regular basis, and nobody ever has it. I thought Gerhard had a rope. Totally oh. has some rope. <laughs> I'm remembering it. Oh my god, you're cats. <laughs> yes, they are cats. <laughs> yep, what about them? Antoine <laughs> says we should buy sexy pants. Anybody got sex pants? Actually, didn't I buy like, fancy clothes at one point? What kind of bonus would these give you? Some of you guys did buy sexy clothes, yes. Like, plus three? Or... Oh, yeah, here it is. It's on my list. We have sexy pants. It's okay. <laughs> okay we got them. We aren't wearing the them right now. We have Christmas at 10, so... It was a sexy party, remember? No. Yeah, Everybody right. was all Japanese -y. With no beer? They had plum wine. That's and not food. beer. It's true, it's not beer. <laughs> But but Tygon got drunk on it anyway. Excuse you. Whoa, they're getting really big. Oh my god, they're not even getting big. <laughs> like <laughs> okay, anyway. we're talking to what's his name. Mm. Go talk to yeah. fucking what's his name. Let me we put this away where they can't get it. Which for, is those, no for those watching on Twitch, we don't stay very focused. We go off on tangents all the time. That's fine. Bye. Uh, <clears throat>
All right, so um, the Black Arts Museum is this big, massive, uh, like, um, black obelisk. It's just kind of like jutting out of the ground. It's almost as if the city was built around it. Oh, I'm burping. Uh, that's not related to the scenario. Um, Nigel is uh, pacing outside the front uh, of the grounds of the museum back and forth uh, waiting for you guys to arrive and when he sees you come up he immediately runs up to greet you and is just like thank, thank the god you finally arrived uh, I'm going to show you a picture of him here there he go be is this museum in Absalom? yes Okay. Um, he, he looks <laughs> he has this Face of relief. I says, thanks to God you finally arrived. Um, it, it appears something quite bizarre has happened to my new Pathfinder turned assistant, uh, Animate. While we were researching the key to the newly discovered portal beneath the museum, I had warned Animate that many corners of the museum hold mystery that as of yet have never been looked into. But I'm afraid something got to him all the same. As the last time yesterday I saw him, he was acting quite strangely. And he never he never came in today. I fear something something evil in the attics of the museum may have cursed him. Wouldn't so, so you're telling us he's not here in the museum. He never came in today. He he might have never left. Right? I have no idea when he left. Um, CSI D and D. He was muttering something <laughs> about Razzle Ross, the the Overwatched, and something about a duel. Uh -oh. When I asked him what was going on, he refused to even look at me. Razzle watch? Beats the hell out of me. Would, could I do oh. a knowledge religion or knowledge anything and try to determine if I've heard that name before? Knowledge history. Uh, Maybe Can we get access to his notes that he was working on? Maybe it would help. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I can... Um, oh. I don't have my thing set up where I can see the rolls. I need to fix that. Yeah, there. Uh, yeah, I, I can. I'll. I'll. Um, I can lead you to the the spaces in the attic. I saw them last. Head to. Oh great. Uh, he was exploring the attics and towers, looking for clues. For uh, the portal in the basement. Right. Yeah. We. Mm. We found the portal, but it's not active, and we're trying to figure out maybe that there's a particular object hidden away in the museum somewhere that opens it. He went up into the attic this morning for a very long time, and when he came down, his voice was hoarse, and the words he used were bizarre. He kept rambling about that Razzle Ross the Overwatched, but nothing he said made much sense. <clears throat> well, I guess we should take a look at this spot. Uh, Lead on. Show us the attic. Show us where he was working and looking. Maybe there's some hint we can find. Excuse you. Um, he leads you through the museum, which is a pretty expansive uh, place. There's like four main wings of it, and you're on the like the the west side of it, the main entrance. And then there's like two big exhibit halls on either side, and then there's like a a long hallway that leads to a main exhibit hall. Um, he leads you back through like an office area, and then he leads you to this rickety ladder uh, in the storage room of the museum. Uh, leads up into like a square hole in the ceilings, uh, plaster work. It's like a, um, like the kind of ceiling tiles you see in an office building, just one's pushed up into the side. <laughs> they have uh, office space here. <laughs> Uh, Ashley, Ashley, are you drinking? I am drinking. No, not you, Ashley. She's drinking um, water. Clear, 100% pure. <laughs> vodka. Tell me it's vodka. <laughs> clear, it must be vodka. Moving on. <laughs> Anyways. Uh, but yeah, he leads you to this rickety ladder. Who's first? I guess. Let's play I'll... rock, paper, no. I'll go first. <laughs> Rock, paper, gnome? Is that ins Are you trying to insult me, dwarf? That's why I take the gnome and throw him into the ceiling. 
<laughs> no, not really. The druid, you wanted to go anyways, right? Yeah, that's cool. Can Nero make it? Nero can, he's pretty good at climbing ladders. <laughs> I have the tiger climbing a ladder. <laughs> He has no climb skill whatsoever. He has pretty good acrobatics, though. Jump, jump. Who's after the tiger? Uh, I'll go. Who's you? <coughs> apparently our dwarf is hesitant to climb up a ladder. Who's after the... There's only one person left. I just want to make sure I can flank whatever's about to kill us all. Alright, so I'm going to throw you guys onto this map here. Is anyone broadcasting on the internet? I am. That's why there's two of me in the Hangout, because one's on a different computer that's just screen capturing the Hangout and the map. Map's not coming up for me yet. Have we not moved? It'll get there. Force players to current map. Center players to current view. Oh, it's just all showing up as black for me. I'm there. Oh. It's all black. I'm going to try to find the... If I find my full-size token, can you do anything with it? A full-size token? What do you mean? Oh, like your picture? Yeah. Yeah, I can. I'll try to find it. All right, so uh, you climb up the ladder, and, you, and uh, the whole place is this dry and like waterlogged at the same time. Like the air is really dry, but it looks like the the it's there's been water damage up here at some point. The whole place reeks of you know vermin droppings, and everything kind of sags. All the the walkway up here is uh, cramped and partially collapsed. Uh, the whole place is stiflingly hot. Um, the boards crack and pop at even the slightest touch or provocation. Should my screen be something other than black right now? Yeah. Mine is. Are you centered? Zoom out. Yeah, no. Oh, there we go. Now it came up. I just had to move everybody's token once they were there. Okay. Um, there are, like, dry rotted heaps of debris like on broken furniture that's been piled up and shattered crates in these long disused chambers that you go through. Uh, but there are a, is a pretty recently and well-worn set of boot tracks that uh, once you get up to the top of the uh, stairway that you're in, they go to the left pretty well. They look human? They look humanoid. Might be the way he went? Yeah. All this time, I, I'm making sure to, like, try to do my best perception and look around and make sure I don't miss anything. Does anyone have any chalk? No. I think I have some chalk. I fixed your picture. Thank you. You are well. No, I don't. You're not welcome. <laughs> I said I don't have any chalk. <laughs> I don't have any chalk. No, I, th I think we'll be fine. I don't think we're going to get lost. Um, but I, I do want to keep constant perception up. <laughs> you cast perception. <laughs> Move forward. I'm trapped behind all these people. I think I went blinded before Doherd, though, so I'm moving myself forward. Yeah. I definitely wanted to go fast. Well, I got this tiger in my way. <laughs> Sorry, moving. Kind of push and move. It's kind of cramped in here, even for a gnome. I can't because I don't have control over my tiger. That's right. That's right, you don't. All right. Uh, there's, uh, you get up here and there's a, so like this is all uh, plank. Or no, no, sorry. This is like brick wall. Oh, you're going to move up. I still can't see anything. And there's a there's a door over here and there's another one right here. I can't move Nero's. Yeah. Nero will just jump on the wall. Okay, that's cool. 
<coughs> where, where do we see those footsteps lead? They lead... Uh, there we go. So they lead between this door and that away. Like, they don't seem to go this way much at all. Okay, I'm going to go that way. Hey, there's an open door. Hey, cool. Hey, guys, there's an open door over here. I totally just, like, walked on the wall. All right. You can go through the door, but, eh. Hey, try and go through the door. Yep. Yes. Wouldn't you know the floor gives out? Oh, my gosh. Oh, great. What the fuck? <laughs> Has it really? Yeah, you two give me a reflex save. Oh, God. <laughs> It has to be reflex, my worst. The traps. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, natural oh, yeah. critical success. Uh, if I can keep it up. <laughs> nope. <laughs> no, very wow. You're good. You leap to the other side of the doorway before it can. Uh, you could fall to your death. I'm gonna fall to my. <laughs> <laughs> The rest of the session is just Perry rolling a new sheet. <laughs> this is, the rest of it is just me rolling as I'm falling down in bottomless pit. <laughs> yep. Uh, I need to pop this out. Pop it out. That didn't help. <clears throat> hey. Alright, you, the floor gives out and you, oh my god, you land on a beam hard across your back. Yeah. You land between the floors. You don't go all the way to the bottom. But you get hit hella hard as this, you know, like broad load-bearing beam just kind of cracks between your shoulder blades and pow! Eleven? <laughs> wow. wow. Lovely. How far down is he? Um, so you fell... Um, you didn't fall far, you just hit really hard. Um, and there's enough beams and boards to where you can climb back up if you want to. Uh, give me a perception check while you're down there. Oh, yeah, sure, a perception check. Uh, <laughs> Why are you laying all busted up? <laughs> That's plus five. It's not bad. bad. It's not terrible. Uh, you realize that you busted your ass. Um, but... Uh, there is uh, uh, a book that seems to be stuck in between the floors down here. Snap. That you could grab. I grab it. Yeah. Does, does it, is it just a book? No markings on it. No writing. No title. No uh, author. You no. Know, it looks like it's more. It's like a ledger. Um, mm -hmm. You want to open it up, and it looks to be. Um, like a logbook of dealings between the Black Rose family and uh, merchants in Osirian. Ah, and uh, and Newt, whatever his name was, was an Assyriologist or whatever? Yeah, there's also a lot of mentions in here of the Pathfinder Society, but it's all really um, like technical merchant business kind of stuff. So nothing that I really have any experience with. Right, but it's it, since the Pathfinder Society is mentioned, it seems something you may want to hold on to. Yeah, I, I hold on to it, and I uh, start climbing out with it. You're going to make me do a climb check, aren't you? No, no, you can't. You, there's enough boards and beams and things for you to climb on out. So is there, like, a giant hole there, or can I go into that room? You, There's a giant hole here now, but you can go into the room if you want to. But now since the hole's there, you can kind of jump around. The first thing you see, there's a dead body in here. Ew. I, I want to check the dead body. All right, let me get rid of this stuff. Uh... What is all this stuff? Oh, my God, Marcia, chill out. <laughs> Man, Perry, you should heal yourself before we get into anything. I... Tygon. Okay, so... Uh, you come into this room, strange organic looking patterns wind across the walls and ceiling of this chamber, and the stone walls look as though they have been winding tendrils. They have grown winding tendrils that enshroud the area. 
Um, at the center stands a massive rust-covered device of gears and arms about 15 feet across. The end of each arm supports a different colored sphere. There's all kinds of weird projections and barbed arrows that point through each of the globes that seem to be in random directions. Uh, right across from the entrance is a naked and very clearly dead body, which is impaled by an arrow, <coughs> a dead, rusty arrow. Um, he is in really, really rough shape. I want to perception the dead body, really inspect it, and okay. see how he died, see if I can figure out who he was, give how me, long he's been there. Give me a perception check. You don't get any perception bonus? No, just for stonework. She is a wise old boy. Oh, just kidding. Okay. <laughs> I thought you did. <laughs> what? What? Oh, how about that didn't even help? You have plus eight perception? Yeah. Just kidding. I have a million perception. <laughs> just kidding. How about I roll shitty? No, she wants to come follow me. <laughs> um... <clears throat> All right. The uh, you go to inspect the body, and the wounds on it begin to like sizzle and turn green, and like like acid is bursting out of this guy's body. <laughs> I don't touch him. <laughs> um, <laughs> Poor, looks gross. Poor. All right. Um, all of you guys see this horrific vision in your heads of this, like, withered guy with, like, an elongated pointed tongue uh, mm. burst forth from a door and grab this guy and, like, just ripping him apart with his claws and his teeth. And and then, so a vision of someone coming out of the door, would that be... What looks like, like is this door? Like the door? And then when the vision fades away, you hear this like like hissing, monstrous voice. The gate shall open soon. That's I'm gonna guess that was a uh, Razzleth. Um, whatever Razzlewath, the Overwatch, or whatever. The guy's corpse kind of explodes. Oh. Um, a little bit. And this like <laughs> just, a, just, just a minor explosion. And, uh, a little explosion. A corpse exploding. It squirts acid out all over Tygon, but he dodges it because his touch AC is more than nine. Yes. <laughs> so yeah, that happens. Um, is this a door over here? Uh, yeah, it's another door. Um, when, when the whole vision, when the vision, business, when the vision business goes away and the room turns back to normal, um, this guy's head has been ripped open and he's been like silered. Gross. <laughs> to verb a character. In, in the vision that we just saw, is does it look like it's this room that we're in right now? Yep. In that door that they came out of was that this door? Um, you're pretty certain that give me a give me a knowledge religion check there, guys. All of us. Yeah. Good thing I'm so knowledgeable about religion. <laughs> oh my gosh. Tigon, on, saves the day. <laughs> I'm I am the cleric. I should have some knowledge of religion. Um So you are very familiar with what just happened. Uh, whatever killed this guy has like ripped his soul asunder in such a way that this area is haunted. It's haunted. That's that's what happened. Like for it to have been like usually these things manifest over uh, like a long period of time, but you can tell this guy died like a day or so ago. Um, I take. How much of his body is left after the exploding? Uh, pretty much everything from the like temples down is still there. Um, but he would like I all the... my holy symbol and my mug. Um, 
I, I, I create alcohol, <laughs> and, 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 I, and I pour it out over him. Here's to you. And, and I take my holy symbol, and I say a prayer over him, and I kind of bless the alcohol I poured on him, and I try to help make his soul rest a little bit more easily. Um, I say a quick prayer to Caden Kellyne. Um, and then I make myself another beer, and I chug it down real quick, because that shit's fucked. Yeah, and you, you figure this guy really needs to be buried. Yeah. According to um, whatever his god's uh, demands are. You no, know, I'm still... I decided to bless the course regardless. I mean, uh, the, the other guy with us, he didn't come up with us, did he? This dead body? No. Nigel didn't come up with you either. Uh, Do you want to, like, haul this thing back with us? Yeah, I'm gonna. Well, regardless, when we leave, I'm taking the dead body with us. But do we want to look around anymore? Does anybody dare open that door and look what's in it? Yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah, of course. Can we? Okay, can we inspect this thing in this? Yeah. So this is this big mechanical contraption. <laughs> uh, you can't see it. No. Oh. I'm not standing in it. I thought I. Is turned... it like whirling around? Oh, you know what? It's because I have I circled it with the vision blocking. Let me turn that off. And there's that. Whoop. Oh, there it is. Is it like that model of the planets where they were all spinning around? It kind of looks like you know, that. Like the old one? The Great Conjunction? Mm. Does it have moving parts? Is it moving? The whole thing is covered in rust. Um, are the spheres removable? Are they pretty on there? Uh, let's see here. The well, um, it, does anybody have knowledge engineering? Probably not. No. No. I do, you don't figure you know how to repair this or anything. Um, there's a there's a, like a little statue that's been jammed in between some gears that probably removing would help it, but also make you rich. Seems was like that a bad thing? Is what? What did you say? Um, I try to grab the statue. You get. You are not sucked into this machine as it works to life. <laughs> Nothing happens is special. You just. Is get any part thing. of it stone or stone workings? The statue is a little piece of like gold. So gold is a metal. <laughs> Uh. <laughs> it apparently, is this bizarre, formless, like creature covered with eyes and tentacles? Oh. So it suits you. That <laughs> 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 is the um big structure in the middle. Is it magical at all? Do I detect any magic on it? Uh, no, you don't detect magic. Anywhere in this room. Uh, give me a heal check. Or, sorry, another knowledge religion check. Knowledge religion. Or both, actually. I totally stashed that statue away. Uh, knowledge religion is plus four. Oh, that's the way and a heal check? Yeah. That's plus three. <laughs> Alright. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, this, this corpse here... Uh, much of its skin has been devoured. Oh. And its skull has been cracked open. It's missing his brains. Um, all his clothing and all his personal effects are nowhere to be seen. Um, you figure that the claw and bite marks all over his body are typical of a ghoul, which are uh, a type of undead that are particularly happy with... They're intelligent undead that feast on uh, corpses or living people if they can get them. Uh, and you also note that this body is partially frostbitten in places. Whoa. Like, not t necessarily tips of fingers and toes, just in spots. Like, and that's burned. where you would yeah. begin to frostbite. What are you grinning about there, Durhood? I'm going to peep in the door. Um, you go keep open the door, and your metal senses go off immediately. Because the doorknob, the doorknob <laughs> on the outside, it, your fucking metal senses. 
<laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so much better. Fucking <laughs> <laughs> <Okay>, metal. <laughs> I'm going to recenter the camera. Do I need to? Um, no, you notice, you notice the doorknob is made out of gems and is super valuable. Um, the whole place is this, the whole doorknob is like this clear crystal with like a chunk of sapphire inside. Like, is it loose at all? or? It can become loose. <laughs> uh, I'll leave it alone. <laughs> Yeah, your, your your metal senses are just like, hey, I need this lamp. So are you going through the door? I mean, what's in that room? Uh, I'm guessing it's ghoul. Doesn't look like anything. Yeah, you go in and it's completely empty of creatures, but there's scattered scraps of parchment and torn, uh, like, book bindings uh, covering the floor of the chamber, and there's scratches all over the walls and parts of the ceiling. The whole room thing. has this foul reek, uh, you know, the the stench of something long dead, which uh, very much confirms your ghoul suspicions. So, do I know if ghouls can like possess a person or? Um, ghouls, you know, to be corporeal, so that I mean they can they can rough somebody up, but they're not particularly supernatural. Um. Is there any particular theme to the books or the writing in here? Is there what? Any theme to the books or the writing? Everything has been scratched up. Um, there are kind of lots. There's lots of text all over the walls and on some of the screeches of paper, um, but it's in a, a language that I don't think any of you can read. Let me check real quick. Sylvan? Nope. No. No. Nope. It'd be like some sort of hell. Well, we do have an L. I forgot that it's really hard to move. Is it written in tiger? Because we have a tiger. <laughs> uh, you guys can give me a linguistics check. What? That's just nat. That's just D twenty. Yep. Okay. Plus your intelligence bonus. Oh, plus intelligence. Oh, yeah, that's right. My intelligence is. I'm gonna specifically oh, add my intelligence to this roll. I don't have intelligence. I don't have intelligence. <laughs> you guys all have I zero have intelligence. Wisdom and charisma. All right, you're, 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 you think this is written in a language, and it's not just gibberish? Hey guys, I think this is a language. <laughs> <laughs> it could just be like gibberish and nonsense. It could yeah. be a two-year-old scribbled on the piece of paper. I'm not sure, but I think it's worth how about, it. How about this whole outer room? Have we really explored it? Is that everything? there is to it, or is there another door? So I feel like there's another door. Well, this is where the footprints led. This is where he was doing his research. There are only two doors. Yeah, you never, you never open this door, and the footprints don't really go this way, and they don't there's really. Another door. Kick open that door. Yes. Where are we talking about? I kick open. I mean, just to open it, like normal, a normal person. You <laughs> aren't a normal person. How many doors have you kicked open? <laughs> yeah. You should use a mouse. I'm right behind her. Okay, give me a mouse. Oh my god. It's your laptop, not mine. Uh, my laptop is way easier. Okay. Another nasty little holding room. So apparently there are rows and rows and rows of little items and things in this room that have been cataloged and marked. And they've all got little numbers on them that don't mean anything to you. It was uh, probably all Do they correspond with any numbers or anything that's in that book I found? Uh, no. <coughs> I wish they had cameras in this. Uh, you want to you want to see us? I you know. <laughs> Zoom in enhance. That's right. Are, are any of the items magical? Can yeah. I detect magic on any yeah. of them? <laughs> What's the most exciting thing in the world? A piece of tissue paper. My cats are having a field day down there. <laughs> can I detect magic on any of these items? You can and you don't. They're useless knickknacks. Uh, they have some historical significance. But the, only, the only thing of apparent immediate value in this place was that little golden statue and that uh, doorknob of, of riches. Let's go tell Nigel what we've done. Yeah, well, I'm going to go back and grab the corpse and 
kind of oh. some remains and try to carry him. You want some rope? That would be nice. And, and yeah. And try to slowly carry him downstairs. Just like hog tie him and just haul him back. Well, I'm going to be more gentle than that. Mm. He just remains with respect. He's flayed. He's leaking acid. And he probably doesn't have a soul anymore. It's probably been eaten, but still. I'm a cleric. i got to try to be good. Right, I'm going to stack all you guys up. There, come back here. Ah. Oh, you can also move with the arrow keys. That might be easier for you. Um, okay. I don't know anything guys back on setup. Ah. in the ocean. So, we didn't find anything there other than that there's Razzle Watch, that there's a ghoul loose somewhere. We don't know where. And more than likely, he's possessed. And what's his name was cataloging the oh, personal um, effects of the ghoul. Knowledge Arcana or Knowledge Geography. I have Knowledge Arcana. Nice. So what's up with all the little musical notes? Those are, that's marking where we've been. And did nice. Did you get Geography? <laughs> I have Arcana in nature. Natural one! Come on, y'all. <laughs> you guys are on top of it today. I can do it. What was it? Geography. I mean, it would just be a, a modifier. I like how I have better geography knowledge than Arcana, even though I'm trained in <laughs> Uh Yeah, you figure that giant machine in there is an Ori. A what? An Ori. What is that? Ori. It is like a globe represents the world, and the ori represents like a star system. Oh, okay. So, Jared was right. So it's like a solar system or something. Yeah! Timing some particular conjunction. So what's mm. Nigel thinking about all this? So, okay, meet back up with Nigel. And... <laughs> I want to ask Nigel if you've seen any sign of uh, the um, ghoul. Or any other strange disappearances or deaths in the museum. I mean, uh, he, he immediately begins to, like, shriek and holler and lose his composure. Because uh, uh, of the body? Because of the body. <laughs> Mm. Yeah, maybe it's in there and <laughs> he, even though like a, like a big chunk of the skull is missing, he recognizes it immediately as maybe uh, we can cover it with like a he recognizes him as Anumet. That is Anumet. And that net is before me. That's Anumet. Do I know if ghouls can like shape shift? Not typically. Maybe they can now. <laughs> Um. So this, but yeah, Nigel was just like, whatever that thing is that killed him is masquerading as animate and walked right out of the museum under my nose. Well, that's not good. Do we know like what direction he was headed? I wasn't paying him any particular mind. Um, when he left, he took with him a single book called The History of the True Art. It's, well, it's, it's, about. it's a rare uh, book in our catalog, which he, had I known it, what was going on, would have stopped him, but it's the only copy we had. Um, Do you have any notes on the book? Well, I don't, but if you go to the libraries of the Foray Logos or maybe visit the Arcanarium, they could have a copy. There, If you uh, go to the Arcanarium, you can speak to uh, Marin Fulon, a wizard that's quite versed in Absalom's history. Well, the first thing I'm going to do is bring this body to Alessia Zardarian. You can do that. She she sent me a letter concerned about the fate of Anumet, and as such, I owe it to her in the Silver Crusade to bring this body to her and uh, pay it some due respects. Afterwards, I think we should check out the these two locations, the library and the Uncarium. Un Uncarium. Arcanarium? 
A canarium. That's the word. Is it? But I, I don't know. I like the idea of an arcanarium. Because we have... Arcanamirium. Arcanamirium. Because we have a, a lead there. Of a person oh, I, I pull out the book I found in the reactor and say, do you know what this is? What uh, can you tell me about this? Nigel? Yeah. He, oh. he looks at it um, and flips through it for a minute. And he kind of worriedly, uh, like, takes it and he says, "Where, yeah, where did you, where did you find this?" I, I, I quickly grab it back from him and say, "I found it in a hole I fell into. Thank you very much." It belongs in a museum. <laughs> it may belong to the museum, but the reaction you gave was not a good one. What do you know of it? It's, um. It's from a very long time ago and does not reflect well on some of the museum's business dealings in the past. Well, I, I did notice that it mentions the Pathfinder Society, and as such, I think the Pathfinder Society should be able to have a look at it. Uh, well, if you you make it a habit of going into other places' businesses and uh, taking I'm their... I'm not other places' businesses. This business involves the Pathfinder Society. It is our business together. Well, um, okay. You do whatever you want. I, I enjoy working with the Pathfinder Society, and, and I hope that, that this won't be a black mark on our um, transactions in the future. Oh, I, I don't think it should be. If, if you mentioned it happened a long time ago, then I'm sure it's nothing. It's just right. helpful and, information to help all of mankind. I think uh, some things are better left lost, but uh, by all means. Great. Is he a historian? Neither. Yeah, he is the curator of the museum. Well, as a historian, you should you should respect that we're, we're looking to uh, uncover history, not hide it. I'm not stopping you. I want to do an insight check, see if he's specifically trying to hide anything or okay. if he knows what this is and he's not telling me. Give me a uh, what's, what's insight? Is that just perception? It's motive. I'm looking for that. I'm at, there it is. Plus three. Oh, for Christ's sake. Like, like, <laughs> I don't see you in the little, like, really, and sometimes I'll be, like, drinking, even though, like, I'm very quick. Yeah, you're, you're not really, like, the, all the, all the book it looks like to you is just a bunch of financial transactions. You don't, you don't really get whatever secret business is on here, but this guy is kind of definitely overreacting to how important it is. I'm going to hold on to it. Okay. It's trying. It's been trying to get me for an hour to confirm that we're actually doing this. Okay. Yeah, because it's like, hey, your event's about to start. Are you there? Oh. <laughs> yes, I'm going. I'm here. So, I, I take the body to Illustria. Right, and you are very heavily thanked, and they see to it that he gets. Uh, they'll find out next of kin from the Pathfinder Society. Handle all, the, handle all the burial procedures and make sure that he is taken care of in a manner of the gods that he worships. Is, is Alastria there? Is she available? She is much too busy to see you. <laughs> Close. The woman of my dreams is too busy to see me. <laughs> a woman in full knight's armor? Hey, she was a paladin. She's in favor with the gods and found that sexy. Chaste woman. Um... Glossing over that part, let's continue <laughs> to the Arcanary. Okay, so the clues you have to work on right now is the whatever this this ghoul thing is left with a book called The History of the True Art. And he was also rambling on about somebody named Razzle Ross. Yeah. I right, say so we go to the Arcanium first. Yep. Okie dokie. And there's there's a secret third option. They just ask people on the streets, like, hey, did you see a horrible monster walking around? 
Oh, well, yeah, of course I know that. I'm doing right now. <laughs> well, we Thanks need for that. We Thanks need for information about that book. As we're leaving the museum and we're walking to the Knights of the Silver Shade and we're walking to uh, the Arcanium, I want to be asking people as we're going. Do we have some kind of image that we can show them of, um, what was his name? I already forgot. The guy who was dead. Enumet. Yeah. Because didn't they say that somebody that you, looked like him walked yeah, out? You've never seen him before, except for, like, the, like, bottom half. You, you've seen enough of his face yeah. So yeah, if you want to, can we give, give a general or like draw a picture? Maybe we give a general description and be like, "Hey, have you seen this person?" Make a make, make a check to render a drawing. Oh, what would that be? <laughs> Whatever you want it to be. What? Well, I mean, obviously it's not going to be acrobatic. Well, yeah, correct. <laughs> but I mean, roll that anyways. Craft or profession, uh, uh, perform sketch comedy. Sketch comedy. Ha! <laughs> God. Get out. Uh, I'm so good at this. I really don't. Oh. I don't know. I mean, we can just ask it. if someone super acting really strange here. Hey, did anybody see a ghoul? It might have been trying to rip your face off. You don't have the skills of an artist. Uh, you can just give a general yeah, give me yeah. give me a gather information check, which is derived from diplomacy. Oh, so it's just a diplomacy okay, check? Okay. Basically just a diplomacy? Yeah. I am good at diplomacy. Oh my I goodness. am diplomatic as fuck. <laughs> I am diplomatic as fuck. You just start to start the beer flowing. <laughs> I don't think I could. I, I can't oh, yeah. be more diplomatic than that. It's nine o'clock. Okay, do we need to take a nine o'clock break? Apparently. Make sure you on the phone. She's gone. Oh, okay. We're taking our nine o'clock break while we get information. Tygon, I'll go ahead and tell you what you get. Well, do we want to take one of the breaks so she can hear, explain to the people watching. I don't even know how many people are watching, like all of our characters and stuff. Sure. I, mean, I don't know. Huh? I don't know. These people have figured it out. Wine um, gathering? Why does it say wine gathering? Because her husband's whining to her. <laughs> uh, let me. Since you guys did some diplomacy, I'll tell you what you guys figured out. Um, so yeah, you ask who's like, hey, did you guys see any suspicious, horrible figures walking around this way? And yeah, this spooky guy, like the one you're talking about, he he stopped me. They like. And asked, uh, he wanted to know how you get to the Tower of the Horn without using the roads. Uh, Tower he, of the Horn? I, I didn't see his face, but he had a he had a hood on and he was wearing a mask. So you know, nothing nothing moved like he was wearing a mask. I didn't mean anything to me, but I figured uh, he wanted to go to the Precipice Quarter. Precipice uh, Quarter. Right. Yeah. Uh, I, he creeped me out, so I told him to get lost and go deal with a guildman or something just to get rid of him. Uh, the Precious Quarter is one of the districts in Absalom, so you're familiar with it. Yeah. Um, but we've never heard of Tower of the Horn, have we? I thought we have. You... Or is that just me? Have not ever heard of the Tower of the Horn before. Um, so now you got something else to ask about, which I'll do on the second roll here. Um, um, do you guys know anything about a spooky figure in the Tower of the Horn? Um, Somebody says he saw uh, a spooky-looking guy talking to a gilman named Anchor, or at least that's what everybody calls him. Nobody really knows what his name is anyway. He's a shady fella, even for a gilman. You guys have missed, dealt with gilman before. You've beat the shit out of some gilman before. Yep. Uh, but 
this anchor fella, he's willing to do anything to make a couple of the coins. Uh, I saw him whispering with somebody in a hood and a mask. And afterwards, they went off together to the precipice quarter. I don't really know what he'd want to do with a Gilman unless he was trying to get somewhere underwater. Wait, Gilman? I missed uh, the anchor who was a Gilman? I yeah. missed something. Gilman named Anchor led him to the precipice quarter. All the Gilman we've met so far people, haven't they? That's not true. You met a Gilman in a cave who was super nice. Yeah, he was super nice. Yeah. I said all the ones we've met have been decent. Why you gotta be racist? All the ones you killed were super evil. Oh no, I said decent, not evil. I think we were like killed. Aren't people. all the Gilman that we've dealt with nice? No. Not bad. The the but one. No, that's not true. We actually had to kill like gang of Gilman at one point. They they tried to rob you. Oh, that's right. I forgot about them. Yeah. So there are, there are good ones and bad ones. Just like people. Oh man. <laughs> the Keep more it. you know. Okay, let's let's our eyes across the screen. Let's do our uh, nine o'clock break and we'll be back. Commercials. Nobody's even watching this anyway. Oh man, we got like seven viewers. No, we got like four viewers. Let me re refresh. People keep yeah. coming and going. The chat. Yeah. I'll set you up. I'm back. They're gone. Oh, oh, yeah. I think they, they're doing something. I don't know. Woo! That is not true. <laughs> Gross. Oh. Don't talk to us while you do it. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Talk. I, I'm like looking and seeing who's all in our chat, though, and who's all watching. We should introduce ourselves because we haven't said who we are or who our characters are. I was trying to say it. And I, Adam was like, no. Nobody so, cares. Go ahead, do it. Do it. I'm Tygon. I'm a gnome cleric of Caden Callian who likes to get drunk, um, but responsibly. Also in game, Perry. Also in game. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm laughing at you. I think both are true. I think, yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, Caden Callian is my guy. For those of you who don't know, he's a mortal man. Who got really, really drunk? Someone bet him to take the trial of the Star Stone, and that he passed it and became a god. And now he's basically the god of drunks, and he's awesome. And I'm a cleric of him. I keep That's saying me. drunken master, and you keep saying no. What? I keep saying drunken master, and you keep saying no. As in, are you the drunken master? I guess. Yeah, maybe I am. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Marcia, you want to introduce yourself, your character? Yeah. I'm a Dwarven Firmfest. A Dwarven Fighter. I don't know if they can see who I am on the screen. But I have psychic powers. Fight with one of those two-handed things. You rarely use your psychic powers, though. They're really weak at this level. And every level, until they get good. Just probably, I don't know, 10. Yeah, there's 10. Oh, okay. And Ashley as well. I don't know if you want to come around and yeah. With the tiger. I mean, my camera's back on. So. No, is the no. mic on? The mic's not on. Well, how do you. I can hear, we can hear you. Oh. I just asked yeah, about that. You said your, no. Your I think laptop's it's... mic is on. My mic is on. Oh. How come? Because you, I don't know, you turn it on. I didn't turn it on. No, your your mic is off on whatever we, you're on, but we're still picking your it up. Your mic is off, but we can hear you. Okay. I'm <laughs> live on. 
<laughs> I'm an elf druid, and I have an awesome pet tiger named Nero, who likes to do dangerous things and get himself killed every game. Or I don't think he's actually gotten himself killed yet. No, nearly killed. <laughs> I also have an owl, but like we never talk about it. He's Wait, you have an owl? Yeah, I have an owl. That's when you have an owl. I've always had an owl. What? What? Moon. This is new to to both me and Mochi. We did not know you had an owl. Yeah, she doesn't do anything. She just hangs out. She's. Like... <laughs> Can you see through her eyes or anything cool like that? No, because Nero's my like companion animal. He's the yeah. only one who does stuff. Moon is just there hanging out. Moon, moon. Yeah. What's the owl's name? Moon. 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 Moon, moon. <laughs> and I have a, a real life Nero here, but he ran away. Is that his name officially, Vivek? That's not, yeah, his uh, name officially is Vivek, but during game nights, he's Nero. <laughs> That's okay. So when Adam comes back, I have a question for him. I think that when I went and returned that body to that basically temple, that someone would have seen that I was weak and somebody would have healed me. I don't know. I don't know that I would question that. <laughs> I'm just thinking that someone probably did. I'm just, um, King Sizenham is asking if any of us play Ingress. And the fact of the matter is, Marsha has tried to play Ingress. Are you, like, level 3 now? Shut up. <laughs> I'm at least level 5. I've been Adam, playing... In... Adam and Ashley, if they've ever played. Adam plays. Adam plays? I didn't know yeah. that. I play up here in North Alabama. Uh, I'm M Destroy in game. In Ingress, at least. In the Huntsville area. But didn't you leave the Huntsville chat? I just haven't been on there in a while. I think they switched. Oh, uh, that's right. They did get a new chat. Yeah. So, Adam. Hey. Question for you. I got While answer. I was taking that corpse to the temple, the people in the temple, they didn't notice that I was freaking health and, like, offer to heal me or anything? This is Nero. I mean, you're not dying. <laughs> <laughs> you're a strong, independent gnome who don't need no cleric. <laughs> What would 11 points of damage out of what? How many do you have? 15? 18? Um, 20. Like, ooh. You've got more hit points left than most people ever have their whole lives. True. I think I, somehow I ended up with the highest hit points I think on our team. Really? Yeah, how much do you have? You you have the highest con, but you guys all have the same hit die. You guys all are rocking D8s. I, don't I know, but really. like. I don't really know. But, like, I had a really good roll for level two. What are you eating? What are you... What? No. Marcia, what's your total HP? Heck if I know. <laughs> it's enough. Is that a I swear to God, I'm looking for it, but I don't even know. It, it's around the middle of... Uh, lower middle. Jerhood has 17 hit points. Tygon and Lila 17. both... 17. and Lila both have 20. Nero has 15. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh man, stop with the health. Sorry. Your excuse. So someone's telling me that while I was at the temple, this is terrible metagaming. It's terrible metagaming. I could uh, make a donation to the temple and they would have healed me. Yeah, I mean, you can do that anyway, all over town. I don't say that. So how much would I have to have donated... You got... um, if you wanted to have someone just cast Cure Light Wounds on you, it would cost ten gold pieces. Oh, that, that's worth it. I'll, I'll cast. I'll do ten gold pieces. Do I have to roll, or do they roll? Or do uh, you... The caster's gonna roll, so I'll roll. Eh. 
Mm. It's something. Mm. I don't want to spend all my gold. I play Ingress. Yeah, I didn't know that you did. Or not. I did. I didn't for a long time because I got locked out of it on my phone. Because you get crazy mods you can put it on there. I use crazy mods and I got it back on there. What, what mods did you put on? Cheetos are bad. <laughs> I put on a mod that makes it work compared to it not working. Like, oh, oh. You on, you're on iOS, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah, you have to have the... You have a jailbroken phone. You have to have the mods to make it work. I do have a jailbroken phone and I do have the mod. Yeah. It's like you're reading my mind. Yeah, no, that 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 I that I that I find acceptable. There was there was a time before the iOS release was out that uh, I'm trying to remember what it was called. There was a different mod that basically emulated Android and made it work before ever, and it was terrible. It was slow. I saw a few people using it, and I saw several people get banned for it. Um, but yeah. Wait, did Ashley leave? She's in the uh, the room. All right, so let's go to the on the way to the Arcanium. I want to be asking people about the Tower of the Horn and see what I find out on the way to the Arcanium. Still, All right, give me another knowledge diplomacy check. Oh, see if I can be just as diplomatic again. Nope. Hey, well, I love diplomacy. It seems like it's not so much that people aren't very nice, it's just that not very many people seem to know what you're talking about. Maybe this uh, expert on Absalonian history in the Arcanarium will. Arcanarium. Cute. Okay, what was the name of the guy in the Arcanium that you mentioned we could find? Marin Fold. Marin Fold. Let's find that dude. Marin Fold. You, this poor woman. At the Ark of Miriam. You, so this is this is a one of those wizard schools that none of you guys have any business in because none of you are wizards whatsoever. You're looked on with kind of sneers and disgust as you cat across you know campus grounds looking for some kind of an administration building where you can figure out where this guy is. You have to yeah, go from office, office, to office to office until anybody even remotely, uh, you know, offers to give you any help. Um, in fact, give me a, another gather information check because most people don't even want to give you the time of day. Is that a diplomacy? Yeah. Uh, eventually you find a some member of the faculty who is like out gardening um, and you figure that you know everything they're growing is going to be all killer mandrakes and horrible Venus flytraps um, but they're pretty polite and they give you a uh, an office number in a building that you can find uh, who <laughs> this, this guy named Marin Fulham uh, He's a human wizard. You find him in one of the arcane laboratories of the school. Um, the, this is like a classroom lab. There are several younger wizards that are kind of like hustling about and working on things. There's all kinds of poops and magic explosions going off on tables and things. Meanwhile, Marin is sitting up on this like raised platform with this big cushy chair on it who's just got his legs up and he's reading a book kind of casually and occasionally just like bellowing out instructions to the students without even looking up. I kind of... Tag on it better. Kind of loudly as we walk in. What's that echo coming from? What echo? I'm hearing an echo. Is it? For me and Perry, not from you. I'm not hearing it. I'm not hearing it. Never mind then. Marcia, do you have two ears? Yes. Sir. Well, I hope she has two ears. Can you remove some of your ears because you don't need that many? Yes. Uh, yeah, take on. Go at this. 
you got better talking yeah, to people. Yeah, I, I make the loud knock as if, excuse me. <coughs> no response from him? Uh, he sits up and um, <clears throat> he kind of, you know, grum grumble grumbles about you walking in. He's like, <clears throat> what? Huh? This is very important work. What are you, what are you doing in my laboratory? I, I, I'm terribly, terribly sorry to disturb you. I, I knocked. I, I apologize. I'm so sorry to disturb your very, very important work. I just, I have the utmost matter of importance. I'm on here on behalf of the Pathfinder Society, and I'm just in need of information, and I was pointed to you, and I was hoping that you could help me out. Uh, diplomacy, Adam, as he scrutinizes you. This, this is you making a check to see how influential your speech was. And it was pretty good. <laughs> I am diplomatic. <laughs> and he looks up and down you, and he carefully um, uh, folds a page over in his book and then closes it and sticks it under his you know, bill. And he sits up and he says, I see why you came to me for my expertise. Obviously, you're not of the more learned folk. Um, what is it more precisely that I can do for you? Uh, I, I take out my extra mug, the one that I don't know drink from, and I... You can't, have, you can't have outside food and drink in here. This is a working laboratory. <laughs> oh, I apologize. I was just going to offer you a drink. I, I put it away. <laughs> uh, this is very serious I, and critical work we're doing. You know. I, I was hoping... You could tell me something of um, Razzlemoth, the uh, the Urber Archer, or or the Tower of the Horn, or anything of that matter. We've some across some of a black end. Uh, also, there's the book, uh, the History of the Art. Um, any of this sound at all remotely familiar? We'd be we'd be in your debt if you could just give us the slightest bit of bit of information. I I'm very familiar with this subject. As a matter of fact, in my years of experience studying the history of Absalom, Absalom legend tells that the Black Rose Museum was once the stronghold of Razzle Ross the Overwatch. He was an astrologer. He watched the stars with weird machines, and some say that he was able to communicate with the otherworldly beings, the dark tapestry that live in the black spaces between the stars. Razoras had a rival, a prominent mage named Beldrin. They carried on a significant feud before Razoras disappeared. The thought is that the feud arose when Razoras accused Beldrin of stealing a key to one of Razoras's many chambers, which contained the wondrous magical tools he used to watch and be watched by the stars. If Beldrin did steal the key to Razoras's magical chamber, he most likely hid it in one of his three towers which once stood on a promontory near what is now called the Precipice Quarter. One of the towers remained standing, the Tower of the Broken Shield, commonly called Beldrin's Tower, which you've actually heard of. Um, the, tandel the Tower of the Candelabra and the Tower of the Horn have both fallen and sunk deep beneath the waves. However, the Tower of the Horn lies at the base of the bluff. It merely remains half flooded and is accessible during extremely low tides. That's the story, fellows. <laughs> I was waiting to get um, did we, did we, said we, we had known of one of the towers. Uh, that... the tower of the Broken Shield, Beldrin's Tower. Okay. But you've heard of something called Beldrin's Tower before. Okay. Um, have we heard of this Baldwin? Nope. Unless you made a knowledge history roll check way earlier. Oh. Um, I pull out this ledger book I found before and say, uh, I, I wonder if you can give me some more information about this book by chance. And, and I kind of show it to him. He takes it <laughs> up and over and not a historical document. This book is um, relatively recently handwritten. 
It's new, you say. It's not historical. It seems to merely detail notes of transactions between the Black Rose house and many Osirian houses, um, as well as dealings with the Pathfinder Society. Well, thank you very much. I'm not sure this this book seems of little importance to, his, to history. That's what I needed to know. Thank you very much. But uh, I think we have what we need here. And I turned to my companions. That's not the information we gave them. I turned to my companions, asked them if they have any questions. Let's go to the Tower of Horns. <laughs> You're just like, yeah, why are we still here? <laughs> You're good. It's like we should go. No, it's just all business. Because I would think that that's what... The Tower of the Horn. The... Oh, I thought he said the other tower. The other tower is the one that you've heard of before. It's the one still standing. Oh. One of them not sank... The one that the dude's one going. of them sank into the... Uh, We're the... actually... The other one is sort of accessible during low tides. We're looking for a copy of the history of the art. Oh yes, do we? We I, I ask him if he has a copy of the history of the art. History of the true art. True yeah. art. By uh, oh, by Jackdaw. Um, that is an exceedingly rare book. Um, I don't personally have a copy. What's um, it about? The history of the true art. <laughs> What's the true art? Um, let's see. Eh, it's about stuff, I don't know, whatever. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> uh, apparently it's one, uh, a book penned by Razzleroff himself, and supposedly catalogs his studies of the dark tapestry. It's it, if any copies exist outside the hands of the Black Rose Museum, I don't know of any. Well, then let's let's go to this Tower of the Horn. On the way there, do we happen to pass any merchants or anything? I could buy us some uh, scrolls of water breathing or anything. You can. And I want to get. That's a good idea. I guess four scrolls of water breathing. How much would that cost me? Let's get up. And how long would those last once cast? We buy a scroll of water breathing. It'll last two hours per level. It's a level three spell, meaning it would last ten hours. Wait, if I'm not level three, can I cast that still? You can, but there is a chance you fail. So let me get. How much would it cost to get four of them? To get one is 375 gold pieces. Ooh. Okay, so everyone can buy their own, and I can attempt to cast it on them. Mm. I don't know if that sounds like it's winning. I'll get one, and I'll pay for it myself. All right, let me get that here. Your head is a pretty good swimmer. Or That's really like snowball. Huh? <laughs> My total gold right now is 949, is what I have written down. So that's minus 375, I guess. One scroll of water really, in case someone has to go into water. And hope I don't fuck it up. How are you going to get... Hmm? Well, so we either have to like swim or hope for really low tides, basically. What the dude told you is that it is accessible during extremely low tides. Unless you can breathe on it. Right. Which Gilman can. Are you fishing? Yep. 
Well, we can't exactly get to the one friendly Gilman we know. How much gold do you currently presently have on your person? On me? You have on your person uh, 1,547 gold pieces. I guess I can get one. And if you don't use it, it's not like it'll go bad. Okay. Except when you never use it and then you're just like, damn it. Well, that's just sell it like the it. end of every Final Fantasy game when you have 5,000 Mega Elixirs. Sorry, 99 Mega Elixirs. And you, like, I have to hold on to these. There's going to be a harder battle soon. Yeah, uh, Durha, do you want to you get one of these? No. Who sure. else is doing it? But what about the tiger? Shit, I guess I got the Shit. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I was going to get four, but if they're 300 something, I can only. One is one third of my gold total. More than one third of my gold total. I'm a pretty good swimmer. Yeah, you actually are a decent swimmer. I'm not. Yeah, I'll get one from And we can afford to wait till we're tied. Can we? If can we? Like, you what? If he, if this is like some undead trying to raise an undead army or something again. That was last time. Last time. <laughs> <coughs> All right, so hypothetically, every one of you could breathe underwater at this point. Um, That's up for me. No, she Marcia didn't did buy one. She did not buy one. No. She did not. Okay, let me. Sugar head, no. Breathing well, spells are for wussies. <laughs> Magic. All right, um, uh, scroll down, scroll down, scroll down. All right, uh, you can get to the precipice quarter pretty easily enough. Um, uh, do you, you guys give me a knowledge nature check? I have that. Hey, that's not bad. Plus zero, that's not bad at all. So, um, if you want to wait for the next low tide, uh, you'll want to do it at night, you know, when the moon comes up. Mm -hmm. You know that. Um, and give me an odds local check. All of us? Yeah. So you're just like, hey, if we're going to do this, we need to do it tonight when the low tide comes in. Um, you also know that if you're going to go into the Christmas quarter at night, that's not the safest part of town. In fact, um, you are... You, they close down... The, like, the whole area is walled off, and all the doors are closed at night. So that if you go in at night, you can't get out till the next morning. Okay. What time do they close, and how close to when they close is low close tide? They close at dusk, and they open at dawn. How close to dusk is low tide? Uh, it, the low tide is in the middle of the night. Oh. I guess we set up camp, and... Let's do it. Why not? I mean, you don't need to set up camp. You just need to, like, kick it until nighttime. Go hang out at the bar. Yeah. <laughs> is there any bars in the press in this quarter? That's a good thought. Smart, smart elf we got here. Yeah. Although, my character, Kate, cleric of Kate and Kalin, would know if there's a bar in the area or not. Right, so you guys will perform your rituals and worship. <laughs> Except for me, because I'm not really... Worship good. at the altar of beer. Performing someone else's rituals. <clears throat> there's some poor guy that can't afford it, his tithing rates that you'll, you'll uh, do it for him. <laughs> okay. Um, and you guys kick it till nightfall. Um, and, you know, you're warned when you go into the Christmas quarter, hey, nobody's allowed out after dark, so we'll see you in the morning. Sorry, folks. All right. You go into the Christmas quarter. Uh, you go all the way to the edge of the cliff, uh, churning waves break against jagged rocks where the precipice meets the sea. There's this chaotic maze of stone and coral with neither level ground 
nor shelter from the ocean's destructive power. Um, and you can see in the midst of all this chaos down there gleaming in the moonlight uh, lies this fallen tower uh, jutting out of the shallow surf, this smooth ivory surface, which is a... Uh, it's fine. You can leave it. No worries. Swarming with uh, seaweed and coral. That's it. Is it like... It's midnight now? No, it's just like getting dark. You guys went in there at dusk because you want to beat the tide. And is there a bar nearby we can drink at? Yes. <laughs> drink till low tide. Until just before low tide. Right we can hit we're right in the part where we're going to get there right when the tide goes out. Because you oh. also got to climb down this cliff. Oh. <laughs> oh awesome. uh, if we do it carefully, can we take ten and do it? Yeah, you can do it carefully, plus you've got ropes. So, yes, you guys can all of you pass a DC 5 climb check. Yes. Well, if we take 10. Yeah. Well, then you guys climb down the cliff. I mean, I don't know what that means. I'm just... So whenever you're not stressed or rushed, instead of rolling a die on the skills, you can be like, I rolled a 10. Oh. If you're stressed or rushed or in combat, you cannot do that. If you are, if it's something that has no chance of failure, like climbing's not. Climbing, you can fail and fall and die. Yeah. But looking around, you just don't see it. You can try again until you see it. You can take 20, meaning I'm going to do this until I win. Sure. Uh, so, yeah, you guys climb on down the cliff. Uh, the tide is going out along with you, uh, so you can kind of sort of wa walk out to the edge of the tower, there's a little bit of swimming you're going to do, but when you get to the base of it, you can see the whole thing is at like a 45 degree list. Uh, it's partially buried um, into the beach, and um, you know, as the as you watch the tide go down and down and down, uh, you see that there's a big uh, sheer breach in the side of the wall, which water just begins to slosh and churn in and out. Uh, the, there doesn't appear to be a main entrance to the tower, or if there is, it's long buried in the sand. Um, There's a big hole inside of the wall. I'm going to go ahead and try to cast my scroll of water breathing on myself, just yeah. preemptively. Okay, let's check it out. I think everyone else should go through side hold first. Well, I was going to look underneath and see if there's a hole that I think people can get to and get in that might be a better entrance. Oh, I was just saying that because I'm the strongest swimmer, I can rescue anyone that's... Well, but if I can stuck. water, I can just go look under and check and see if <laughs> and you as a strong singer can back up the guy who can breathe underwater and the tiger and everyone else and get in through that entrance, maybe. Yeah. All right, so you are able to cast Divine Spells. You do have the spell on your spell list. You do have the requisite ability score. Uh, your caster level is not equal to the spell's caster level, so you need to make a check. So give me, what do I roll? Give me a caster level check. What do I roll for that? Um, D20 plus 2? D20 plus your level, yeah. 7. Oh my god. Well, you need to beat a 6, so you passed. <laughs> <laughs> and if I'd have to do that, I'd say, hey guys, watch this! And I dive underwater, and I just start, like, mouthing like I'm breathing underwater. All right, so you start churning out this magic uh, transmutation spell, and the power begins to overwhelm you somewhat, and you have to pull in your inner reserves of uh, faith and Caden, and you manage to rest yeah. control of the spell as you give yourself the supernatural ability to breathe water. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to dive down, I kind of look around the base of the tower, see if there's any other way in. Um, give me a knowledge nature check. Knowledge, nature. 
I'm not down there though, am I? Yeah, you guys all climb down the cliff. Oh. You guys are getting to where I the thought park. he was already in the water. That's why I was confused. Uh, you guys, like, you're walking down the beach. You're following the tide go out, and then you saw the um the hole in the wall. Tide guy, and you're just like, great. You you don't you figure that the tide's as low as it's going to go. There's not going to be uh, any place. This the the depth of the water here is you can. You can you'll get in there and you'll get wet, but it's not going to be the worst thing in the world unless these waves overtake you. Okay, so we need to get in there and get in there quickly. Yeah. So are you the, swimming you, from the base of the tower? I didn't find any other entrances. All the other entrances to the tower are buried, and and Lila says that the tide's not going to go down any lower. Okay. Well, I guess we go into the crack. My scroll of water breathing was useless. Go into the crack. Well, you still have it for ten hours. Two hours. It's one hour per capture level. Hmm. Yeah, you use the scrolls capture level, not yours. Oh, so I'll have it for three hours. You have it for ten hours. I thought you said it was one hour per level. And it was one a hour per capture level. level. The capture level of the scroll was five. Oh, I thought you said it was three. Sorry, okay. The spell level of the spell was three. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. Sure. I have it for, I have it for ten. Ten. Yeah, ten. Um, do I, like, spout magical gills or anything? Do whatever you want to do with your magic. Yes. <laughs> I have, like, little gills. I'm like, I, I turn into a like, look at this. Do you have to breathe water? No. I can it's choose optional. to breathe water. Like, spell does not make creatures unable to breathe air. You can be like Kevin okay. Costner in Water World. Yeah, pee in your own <laughs> <laughs> For role-playing purposes. <laughs> Um, okay, so you guys wade into this thing. Um, um, half of the chamber's floor is covered in seawater, obviously, uh, and the tower reeks of brine and the lingering smell of decay and death. Um, there's a bunch of uh, doorways that lead to other chambers. Uh, the doors are all long since like rotted off their hinges. They're pretty useless. Um, the like southern doorway is like half submerged beneath the, beneath the nice chilly cold water. Uh, and there's a big hole in the ceiling to the north with a rope dangling from it. And there's another hole in the floor below it which is like filled in with debris and like ocean gunk. I'm gonna put you guys on this butt ass ugly map. Yay. You guys are gonna need some light sources. I have. We have our uh, wayfinders for light. All right, so you'll turn your wayfinder on. Oh wait, do I have? Oh, I turned my wayfinder on. Dude, has got dark. I have fairy fire. Oh my god, that doesn't give you light. Oh. Oh, I can do dancing lights. Wait, I thought it. What does it do then? It's. Let's look. Fairy fire doesn't that like illuminate invisible things? Yeah, so that's hot. Oh. Whichever one you don't have is the one you want. I have dancing lights though that I can give us. Well, you got way, the wayfinder one is the 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 free one you can do all the time. Let's see here. Dance or fairy fire. Out uh, pale glow surrounds and outlines subjects. Yeah, I can cast dance light. Should light as a candle. Well, so candlelight, which is sort of okay. Uh, you, I don't worry about that. I'm gonna cast dancing lights. I have a torch. Yeah, don't worry about it. Keep sure, you it. <laughs> Save your torch. All right, so let's get this visible here. The dancing lights move with me. There's four of them, and they and they have to stay within ten feet of each other, but they move with me. I have dark vision, so I don't really need anything. Dancing lights are the best spell for this because it's terrible to manage. I can move them at will, and there's four of them that would have to be within a certain distance of me. Um, it says... Four lights that resemble lanterns or torches and cast the same amount of light... Um, or one vaguely humanoid shape. 
that must be a ten foot radius of each other in relation to each other. Move as I desire. They can move up to hundred feet per round. I have little light vision. Hold on, I'm making your dancing lights. Oh. How much? What's how much light do they make? Um, should we go back to that page that has that information? I think it said equivalent to a torch. I I I think I closed that link. But it was equivalent to a torch or a lantern. But there's a cute cat there. Yep. And I can do that once per day as a gnome. Okay, uh, so you light your wayfinder, your dancing lights. How long does that last? Oh, God. I, okay, now I'm going to have to open it back up again. I wasn't paying it that close attention. The line must be drawn here. One minute. Awesome. That's ten rounds. Okay. All right, so there's your dancing lights. Now that i got it all set up, I don't know if you guys can see this map or not. No. Me not. And force players. Map is not. It's totally not player visible. And force players are current map. This is probably going to take a minute to load because it's the background. Uh, and we're not going to go a heck of a lot farther <laughs> since Marcia looks like she's sick, dying, and asleep. <laughs> Man, I want to go back to Melt. That was so good. It was so good. They were so sweet, too. I actually knew her. She used to be Peyton's friend. Peyton has friends. Okay, so um, there's... These three routes, it looks like. So yeah, the all those look like they at one time had doors holding them closed, and uh, this is a big hole in the ground and a hole in the ceiling. Uh, you figure there was a stairwell here, like a spiral staircase that's long since collapsed, but there is currently a briny, worn-out rope leading up to a second floor. Oh so shit! Climb that thing. Would you like to go first, Derhead? Yes. Derhood's going to climb up the rope. I'm going to send one of the lights up after her and climb up, and then the lights are going to follow me. You should be able to move those all freely. Oh, I can move them. So, Derhood, you start heading to the rope. You, everybody give me a persnickety check. Uh, what? <laughs> I mean a persnickety check. Does this persnickety have anything to do with stone? Nope. Uh, I'm, I'm guessing it's a perception. Oh my god, Tygon, you saved the day. Natural 20! <laughs> Alright, so you guys start dealing with this rope over here. And Tygon, you realize something is creeping up on you guys from the southern oh, snap. Uh, doorway. It's like a mermaid, but it's not a man. Merma. <laughs> a merman, Dad. Merman. <laughs> No, it, it's there if you follow it over. Mer motherfucker. <laughs> Is that appropriate? Does Twitch allow that word? Is what? Does Twitch allow us to use that word? Yes, correct. This motherfucker. Is... Motherfucker, 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 motherfucker. This thing swims up. Um and <coughs> rages. It looks emaciated and hungry. And it's gonna attack you guys because it's a dick. Because no. he's a cat and he can't move the lights. Yeah. He's like, ooh, dinner. Awesome. Am I supposed to be able to move the lights? Uh, no, you can't. I'm I'm getting rid of them. I'm gonna okay. make the objects also. Can I get some water? Yes. How do I get an I got a decent initiative roll. Really? 
Yeah, I figured I had to look at the initiative listing now. Instead of this thing getting a surprise round, you barely beat its stealth roll in water, um, but it's still going to act first because it's a fast motherfuck. Motherfucker? Mer motherfucker. <laughs> uh, it is going to sweep around and go after Nero. it's not going after Nero as much as it is trying to block that door. Oh. It seems to be. It like immediately swoops in and then it's going to go after Nero. Uh, this thing is a big... Gr- and then go after Nero, yeah. <laughs> this thing is a big, brutish, uh, humanoid-looking thing. Nero don't care. It looks like a fish. He wants He's dinner. delicious. <laughs> Sweet um, food. And it's going to try and claw. It also got a javelin, but it doesn't seem to want to use it. All right, so we got a seven to hit Nero slot for today, see, which is probably not. Hey, Dan Durhead, you're next. Yes. Take a step. Pull out my axe. Throw an axe at him. Throw an axe. Whoa, you haven't thrown an axe. Yeah. I think. Oh yeah, that's right. You have drawing weapons, don't you? That you never. I'm shitty at them, apparently. Uh, ten is going to miss it entirely. Yeah. And you guys can stand where those fairy fires are. Don't worry about it. Uh, Nero's up. Nero's gonna defend himself. Yeah, he wants dinner. Two claws and a bite. Oh, 18 hits. Do I roll damage or do the claws? Uh, I roll damage first. Uh, three is going to do it. I only get a claws if I get a crit, though, right? No, you get all three as long as you don't move. Oh, okay. Or motherfucker. So now I get my clothes? Yeah. Mer- <laughs> and definitely, it's, it's definitely not a man, <laughs> and it is definitely not a maid. Oh, dang. Okay, I'm going to guess that first claw. Yeah. Is. Oh. Uh, 12 minutes. So we got a good chunk to take it out of him. Now he has a taste for fishmen. Except it's a lady, but it's not a maid. Tygon! Could be an old maid. I can move right there. And poke with my rapier. Poke, poke, poke. And miss. That's pretty much all you did was poke. (laughs) Oh boy, come on guys. That's the water. (laughs) Oh, I should have... Too late now. I already did my thing. <sighs> uh, you last. Does it have any weapons? Like it, it has a javelin, but it's not here. currently wielding it. It's attacking with claws. Can I move right here? You can, but that provokes. Uh, well, I can't reach from here. There's a tiger in that. You may have to just go around. <laughs> that so provokes. Hit the space bar to drop. Oh, like here? Yeah. Can I go here? Like, can I? Can I? Oh, I can only move 20, though. I think if you take a corner, you should be fine. So, like, if I go from here to here? Oh, how do I, like, unspace it? You can't. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> oh, yeah, I dance. Wait. <laughs> okay, wait. Go to, go to their head. Don't go. Go here? No, go. Go just one space to their head. Uh, on Durha, hit the space bar, and then go diagonal, and then go I'm diagonal here. again. Yeah, space bar. Okay. Diagonal. Space bar. Diagonal. <laughs> there you go. And then stop. And then stop. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. That doesn't provoke? 
No, because uh, you don't have Ross's attack range. You didn't. You didn't. Oh, okay. Um, and then I'm gonna use my summon star because I love that thing. Oops. Oh man, 19 stabs him. Uh, Was it crit? Oh uh, no, 19. It was 19 dice roll. Uh, five damage. Oh yeah, sorry, I wasn't looking. And that's the first round. Where motherfucker got surrounded hard. Sorry, I didn't mean to move you. Like Lila's token is stuck in. <laughs> Oh god. Did you just freeze the whole game? No, but I really am gonna just save it right now. Just so just in case not full crashes. Um Okay, so this murder Um takes a minute to size you guys up. It just like looks to see who's bringing what to the table and attacks Tygon with two claws. First claw is an eight to hit, which you dodge yes. deftly. Second one is a six to hit, which you dodge even deftlier. Got to bring more gain than that. Seemed like she spent the majority of the time deciding who to attack, but she holds her position to keep you guys from getting out the door. Uh, Durhood. She's muted. I'm back. Oh, man, I forgot to play music. I bet this dream is so boring. I'm definitely not drunkly falling asleep. <laughs> Marcia, are you drinking? <laughs> <laughs> Yay. <laughs> Happy Monday. Um, <laughs> I only got two beers after my six pack I started with tonight. I've got two inches of wine. <laughs> <laughs> um, I take out my weapon and I move, and I can't do anything else. We can meet it. What? Yeah, she said she should start bringing wine, and I said we can meet it. She and I don't have anything else. You're just moving. Well, I took out. I had to unlimber my weapon, so that's another half move. All right, you're all set and done. What's going on with my token? I do not know what's going on with your token. Nero, Nero, keep murdering this fish. Yep, he's gonna keep doing his thing. <laughs> Seventeen. Seventeen will hit. Maybe, actually, hold on. Uh, Seventeen does not hit. Seventeen scratches it through a, a thick, platey piece of skin. Well, shit. But more text, more text. Oh, did I get my glasses? Yeah, on. keep going. Giddy! Misses. Misses. God Ooh. damn. This thing is a big, tough brute. Back on. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and cast Gorm's armor on myself. Back up first. Nope. Okay, it's gonna try and call you again. Do I get the spell off first? Nope. Uh, that is a 24 to hit. That hits. Do I still get the spell off? Uh, you're gonna have to make a check now. Uh, it's four points of damage. Ouch. Jeez. I can't see my character to even see my health anymore. Because Lila's all messed up. Uh, we're, no. we're working on it. Uh, and a 22 versus your combat maneuver defense. So I, I just roll a d20 plus CM bonus? No, it's just your static CMD. 10? 10? 
you are grabbed. You're grappled. Oh, no. Oh. Okay. So does my spell get off? You need to make a caster level check. Concentration. Uh, so that's 1d20 plus... Plus 2 plus your wisdom bonus. Plus 2 oh. plus wisdom. That might be so a 1d20 plus 2 plus 3? Yes, and you need to beat a 15. Ooh. Yes. All right, now you need to make another one because you're um, grappled at this point. Uh, this, the grapple... So you may, you, you shrug off the, the injury and are able to keep going with the spell, but then this thing holds you grappled and you ruin your spell. Dang it. Man. I should have backed up first. I should have disengaged then Gorm. But can I disengage as a bonus action? I didn't explicitly ask you if you wanted to. No, but I didn't think I could disengage and then cast a spell. I Five thought that counted as an action to disengage. I could step. Oh. Well, you'll learn. He's taken off the kid gloves. He used to warn us about shit like that. Well, no, he did, he did ask me if I wanted to move, but I didn't because I misunderstood that that would take an action. That's my fault, though. Um, you are out of actions, actually. Yeah. You grabbed you, and now you grappled. Yep. Uh, Lila. Fortunately, that thing is also grappled. Okay, so I'm going to hit it with the scimitar again. Get it. And hopefully... Oh, my God, I moved. Maybe. You didn't mean to move. No, but I would have moved out of the spot, so I'm not, like... Yeah. Yeah, it looks decent. Yay, we're in the correct locations again. Yes. Uh, 18 hits, especially now that it's grappling. Oh, boy, 7 points of damage. Lila is the, the, the tough guy. Oh, I killed it. That scimitar, I always do get that scimitar for some reason. Um, your robe and wizard hat. All right, round three, Mer mother. That's never not good. All right, now that it's got Tyga and grappled, it's gonna just try and rend him to pieces with its claws. <coughs> I told him I'd cast Gorm's arm in the first round. Um. It's going to roll a 28 versus your CMD. Which is wow. 10. And rip you to shreds. And this is what I roll up in the character. Uh, you take three points of damage from all that. That's it. We come across a stranger in the ruins. <laughs> we accept him into our party without question. Uh, <laughs> do it. Do it. I'm going to do two attacks on him. Oh, boy. Oh, the second one's a threat. Yes. Finally. Oh, the threat on the one that doesn't do as much damage. Oh. What more? Not sure. Enough. Did the first one even hit? First one didn't hit. Six points of damage. That is enough to grievously injure it. It still has a sliver of health left. Jesus. Uh, maybe Nero can finish it off. Nero, give him a bite. Uh, bite misses. Nero, give him a claw. Well, Mrs. Nero, give him a call. Give it. Give uh, it. Come on. Come on. Come on. All right, Tygon, you're grappling with this thing. So I'm grappled. Is it right. possible for me to, like, take my rapier and just stab it right in the gut? If, it's, if it was a light weapon, you could. Rapier, masterwork rapier doesn't count as a light weapon, does it? That's a, that's a one-handed weapon. Uh, your options are you can try and take control of the grapple. You can try and escape. You can do unarmed damage, or you can attack with a light weapon. I don't have a light weapon. You don't have a dagger anywhere, like stashed in your boot. Nope. Oh man, you gotta get that old dagger stashed in your boot. 
No. Nope. You have a gauntlet, which you can use as lethal weapon to try and <laughs> make it bash it. Yes. Punch it sure, in its why face. Not? What do I, that? I don't think I see that on my sheet anymore. You can make your regular attack roll at minus two, <laughs> or you can make your combat maneuver bonus, whichever is better. Hmm. My regular attack roll with the rape, where, where do I see that versus my rapier attack roll? Uh, your rapier attack roll is at plus four. Your gauntlet is at plus three because it's not masterwork. I thought I got masterwork uh, armor. You did. You don't have masterwork armor, and even if you did, no, I have loose armor shield. Masterwork scale mail. I didn't buy it for you. All I know is it's listed on my sheet there. Masterwork scale mail. And I, I know I sent you this sheet. This sheet. Okay. Um, but even, even if the armor is masterwork, that doesn't apply to attack rolls made with it. Okay, fine. Um, so, <laughs> plus three? It's going to be plus three minus two because you're grappling. Which is the same as my CM bonus, which is plus one, right? It's, usually that's how it works out. So 1d20 plus 3 minus 1. Hey. It was, it was minus 2. So 17. 17 is enough. So you deal your damage, which is with the... Because you're small, it's a d2 plus 1. D2? Like flipping a coin. Hey, I'm tiny. <laughs> well, I'm not a very large gnome. D2, it's a theoretical dice. Alright, you knock him out. Take hold of me. Pow! Pow, you knock him out. You slug it right in the face. Um, and now that it's unconscious and slowly being sucked out of the vortex that is the uh, wall of the room, you can give me knowledge of local check to know what the heck this thing is. Yeah, you know, it's my motherfucker. Her <laughs> Oh my gosh, their hood. And I'm going to take out my one pure moderate roll and cast that on myself. I'm weak. Their hood. This is, so, you know what, you, you probably have an idea what, you know, like, merfolk are, right? Like, half fish, half people? This is merfolk, except instead of half fish, half people, it's half fish, half ogre. It's a marrow. Cool. You guys are, <laughs> cool. <laughs> you, guys are, you guys are technically ogre slayers? You killed a giant. This is a giant sometime. Did it, like, what is it, a giant? Oh, no, I don't. Hmm. I thought I got a bonus for it. It's not a giant. Because I have a bonus for it's a giant. Um, it is a giant. Those bonuses should have applied. Yeah. Ooh. You killed it even harder. Because I have a uh, plus four dodge bonus versus giants on my AC. Let me see what those rolls I did against you were. No, we're not going back and making the grapple not happen. We're going to go back into the middle of this fight. Come on. But yeah, you 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 realize, hey, this thing was a giant. <laughs> so my AC was actually 20 that entire fight. Whew. You knew that you had an irrational hatred. Uh, he, he only hit you once. The second time was a combat maneuver check. Uh, uh, not to us would have mattered. Uh, but I think I, yeah. Uh, 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 here's the... It was a 28. <laughs> Never mind. It wasn't a wow. clock anyway. <laughs> the, okay, so the first hit that grabbed you was a 24, and then the second hit was a 28. So we, okay, well... Kill the so giant. I kind of, like, kick its body out into the regular ocean. Kill the giant with your bare hands. I did. Well, <laughs> my I had the gauntlet on, but... Um, and yeah, so that thing just tried to jump you while you were climbing the, the rope. And I'm and back to climbing the rope. I, before I climb the rope, I want to use my scroll of cure moderate. And yeah, heal, heal yourself. Myself, I'm weak. 
Okay. None of us got injuries. It's 2d8 plus... 3d8? Uh, it's 2d8 plus 3, oh. and you also need to make a cast spell check. Because technically you can't cast Cure Modern Wounds yet. 2d8 plus 3? Yeah. You need to roll a d20 at your cleric level and hope you beat a 4. You did it! Wait. So that was how much I heal for. Yeah, make, make sure you can cast a spell. 1d20 plus 4, you said? 1d20 plus 2. You need to beat a 4. You did it. Yeah. Oh Let me recast that, that, that heal since that was not accurate. That was even weird. Um, yeah, and it's 10, so do you guys want to call it and explore this place next time? Hey, did you know Why that Lila had He was tired. What? What? You guys, you, talk, you guys spoke at the same time. Did you know that Lila had an owl? Lila has an owl? I knew that. Yeah, we didn't know that. We were introducing ourselves, and I was like, oh yeah, I have an owl too, and they're like... Wait, you muted yourselves. They don't want to talk to us anymore. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> Did I mute them accidentally? No, I think they muted themselves. I wasn't paying that close. Yeah, you muted them. Yeah, you I've, been, I've been talking to you guys muted this whole time. Yeah, Marsha muted you. Thanks, Marsha. That crazy echo is coming out of your ears. Definitely. Came in out of my computer sexually? <laughs> yes, sexually. <laughs> I love the one I get crazy sexual echoes. Uh, so, yeah, we will stop because 10 o'clock, right? Yep. Yeah. yeah. Sure. Um, Dude, those on Twitch will be back next month. Twitch channel. Yeah, that's what the guy said in chat. Well, I can't see the chat. You keep turning your phone off. I. That's not my phone. <laughs> What did they say in chat? Get a beard over for DM 2016. I don't want to be DM. I'd be terrible at it. I'd just kill them all. I hear you're definitely not a racist. I'm not a racist. I'm totally not a racist. Unless you're a dwarf. <laughs> Fuck dwarf. What was that? Yeah. Yeah, dwarf. He always wants to fight all the time. Cobalt? <laughs> Is that just something that people generally hate, though? Some people hate kobolds. I love kobolds. Yeah, no, I have a natural hatred for kobolds. He has a, he has a in game an in game mechanical thing to fight kobolds, goblins, and giants. Okay. When they came out with the shiver kobolds. I have kobolds. defensive training against giants, and I have a hatred for goblinoids and reptilians. When they came out with the Chevy kobolds, 100%, I thought it was the Chevy kobolds. I got really excited about it. I don't know this story. <laughs> And, like, because we were in the south, a guy had a super swing, and he was like, you guys want a shitty cobalt? <laughs> I was like, yes. Yeah, of course I do. <laughs> yep, yep. So I'm, I'm curious if you could look at the stats. What, 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 what number of you should we max out at? Was there, like, a high point? Well, I don't know. What What was the question? How many viewers did we get? We, get, we got 13 right now. Was, it like, was there a point where we had, like, 30? No problem. We're like 5,000? We had 5,000. We had 5,000. <laughs> we had more viewers than Critical Role Thursday nights. I mean, V2 used to on regular get 100, 200 people. We yeah. can start casting this on a regular basis. And then it died. I mean, I put it on the schedule to cast today, so next time yeah, Monday, I 8 o'clock. We should be saving these. And it's like video on Twitch, too. I've got a local recording. I'm not going to edit it because editing video is the worst. <laughs> no, no. Unedited. How shitty we really are in real life. Yep. But, yeah, I think the setup I did work pretty well, so I don't know. I don't know how the audio turned out because I can't. Some guy knows. We ain't so important no more. I can't see the shot unless I'm looking over here. Man, remember the V2 days? No. That's where you would get on and it'd be like immediately 400 extra people. I don't remember yeah. that. 
We have no clue what you're talking about. I will. I'm going to stop the stream. I'll stop the recording, and then I'll stop talking to you guys because this was pretty good. So everybody, goodbye to the internet. You yeah, everyone okay. for watching us. It was fun. We'll do it again next Monday. Yeah, next Monday, and then Thanksgiving break. Everybody eat all your turkeys. Yeah. Get the fuck out of my face. <laughs> Leave it on a high note. Oh man, I can't stop the recording from up here. I have to go downstairs to do it. Uh. Oh shit! Shit! Hang up the call. So this we say, while he's not in the room, we say like terrible things about him. <laughs> you don't need to do that one out of the room. You do that off in the room. <laughs> I hear he smells like a dead Like a dead I don't normally smell like that. Like that. Smell that. <laughs> I don't normally <laughs> smell like that. What? <laughs> nope. I don't like going to smell them. You don't notice when people smell good or bad? I mean, like, I know it smells bad, but I don't like to go through it and, like, I'm going to smell you. No, that's weird.